Hi everyone, this is Angie from the Honeysuckle Haven. Welcome to the March into Spring crafting event. Last day of winter and we are heading into spring. So how is everybody this beautiful Saturday? If you are out there today, say hi and let me know you're there. See who's out there. If you want to see a, a spring drop cloth craft. <laughs> I had lots of people asking and so I decided to go ahead and do it since it's March into spring. This is the perfect one. Well, it's a good one for that. I shouldn't say perfect, <laughs> but it's super cute. So if you guys are out there, say hi. I see some people hopping on. I hope everybody's having a good day. Let's get my comments rolling over here. So I did back, um, oh gosh, a few months ago I did a drop cloth snowman. I just had an idea to make a snowman one day and it turned out super cute. So then I thought, you know what? I can make an e a bunny <laughs> for Easter. So I made a bunny and it turned out pretty cute. And so now I think I'm gonna do another spring drop cloth craft because um, some people were asking. So we're gonna do that today. We're gonna use, while you guys are hopping on, I see lots of people, welcome, welcome, thank you for joining our March into Spring event. They were lots of amazing crafts today. So we still have a couple more presenters after me, so you can still catch a couple more crafts. And if you missed them, you can go back and watch the replays. Um, for my craft today, we're gonna use a vintage frame. Actually, I'm repurposing, reusing it for, I used it for something else, and now I'm using it today. Um, so this is just a circular, circle-shaped, vintage frame. I got it at a resale shop. We're going to use some drop cloth and some quilt batting. We're going to use some scrapbook paper. I picked this one because it's kind of vintage looking. It's kind of old fashioned looking and I liked it so we're using that. We're going to use some flowers and some little eggs so you can probably guess what I'm making today and some other fun stuff. So we are gonna get started today. I'm excited. This one I think is gonna be super cute. So the first thing I need to do is I'm gonna take my frame apart. And this frame is pretty neat. It had four screws in the back holding it together. And I took two of them out, but I left two so it wouldn't fall apart while I was holding it up to show you guys. Hi Lou and Anna and Judy. So yes, I hope you are not tired of drop cloth crafts. I had people asking, so that's what we're doing. Just throwing another idea out there. So I've done about one a month. <laughs> I did one, well, no, let's see. Well, yeah, it might've been, well, I thought December, I think December, February, and now one in March. So almost one a month. Okay, now I take the back of it off and I'm just gonna set that aside. Where do I wanna set it? And then there's a cardboard piece, and then another thin cardboard piece. And then this is the frame. And I went ahead, This I'd already painted this cream and used a Waverly, the Waverly antique wax that I use a lot. I'd already made it look kind of dingy and old with that. It is old anyways, but so it wasn't so crisp and bright, like brand new paint. So I went ahead and did that ahead of time. All right, and now, oh, and I hope I'm not freezing up because I am freezing over here. Newbie and Sprinkle will welcome Terry. Good evening, Sue, welcome. Thanks for joining. Love my shirt. Oh, thank you. This is one of the ones that I pressed. You're a limited edition, darling. <laughs> I thought that was a cute little quote, a little saying, drop cloth. Yes, Anita, you're going to have to get a drop cloth. Um, Harbor Freight is where I get them. They're the cheapest that I found, um, but you can get them at Lowe's, Home Depot, any like hardware store. I'm going to move that just a little there. Thank you. Welcome, Denise. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our scrapbook paper. We're just I'm just going to put it on this thinner piece. It's like poster board. We're going to put it on that, and I want, I like this pretty design at the top, so I want to try to get as much of that as I can on here. So I'm going to put it all the way up, 
covering up that pretty design to make sure I get most of it on there and then trace around it. I get 45 minutes today so I did not cut this out ahead of time because sometimes I tend to craft kind of fast and I'm usually done around 30 minutes. <laughs> so all right so I traced around it and it looks like let me see through the light that I got most of I don't know if you can see nope you can't got most of that design on there now we're gonna cut it out this scrapbook paper I have had for a long time it was in my drawer of scrapbook papers I want to get on the inside of the line not the outside I started to go on the outside because the way the frame is designed it has to fit down on the inside there's not a lot of wiggle room what has everybody been up to today we went to Sam's I got some more of those yummy pineapple <laughs> at Sam's today and they are six dollars and something I can't remember the exact amount um, I think we bought four jars of it <laughs> today <laughs> and we went and got some mulch for our flower bed ran out to the river cabin I'm kind of busy did a lot today Aw, thanks Brenda yes welcome all the new ones and thank you for all the ones that stick with me <laughs> okay I almost got this cut out here sorry talking and cutting Let's set this scrap piece aside. Yeah, my comments are not rolling over here, so I'm just gonna have to use my phone. So there, do you see that? Look, that's, I thought that paper was really pretty. We're gonna use that, and we're gonna attach it to this poster board using the Mod Podge method. I just keep switching it back up. Mod Podge, spray adhesive, you just never know which one I'm going to use. I got some of the pineapples from Sam's too. Oh good Linda, they, did you try them yet? They are delicious. Oh good. Oh no, that's, well, the poster board is a little slick on one side. We're going to try it. I wanted to use the rough side and I went ahead and Put Mod Podge on there, so we'll just roll with it and see how it goes. Let's put some paper towels under here so I can go off the edge a little bit and get it all the way to the edge. My son and I went to local nursery and bought some plants. Yes, it, it's a good day for that today. We have green popping up in our flower bed. We trimmed everything back. So spring is coming <laughs> thank goodness got some stuff on there so just put a thin coat of Mod Podge whatever you're if you're wanting to put scrapbook paper down on here put a thin coat all the way on it we're gonna dry it and then we're gonna iron it on and that helps not have any wrinkles Okay, hopefully this doesn't want to curl up on me too much. If it does, we're just going to put it down on that cardboard. We'll try it and see how that works. Okay, we're going to dry it. I'm going to press this down. When we iron it, it'll flatten it out too. So put your Mod Podge on there, dry it. scrapbook paper is about to blow away. <laughs> no, you haven't tried them yet. Let's see. We have family at the one place. I'm going to try them tomorrow. Well, I hope you like them. Okay, so it's pretty dry. Now I'm just going to put my scrapbook paper right over top. Try to line it up. Press it down. Now if my comments are in the if the comments are in the way, just swipe them to the right so you can see what I'm doing here. 
because I know they're covering right over top of what I'm doing. Um, parchment paper and then a hot iron. Super simple. Let's see how this does on this um, poster board. I have not done it on there, so we'll see. I'm the guinea pig for this one. Hi, Angie and everyone from Virginia. It was at Debbie. Welcome, Debbie. Thanks for joining today. Okay. Yeah, it warmed up a little bit today. It was chilly this morning, but got in the 50s and the sun is out, so that helps. Okay. Wanting to curl up on this poster board a little bit. So we might have to put it down on the cardboard. Let's see. We'll see how it does. Okay. <laughs> and I think it attached to my uh, paper towel. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. It's on there. Let's see what it looks like in our frame. It's on there pretty good. There's, I don't see any bubbles. It just wants to curl up on me a little bit. But I think once I put all my drop cloth and all my stuff on there, I think we should be good. And it's going to get pushed down in the frame. Let's try it real quick, just to make sure. And if I don't like it, on the cardboard it's going. It gets pushed in there really tight, so it's not going anywhere. I think, it, oops, I want it like that. I think it's going to work. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, we're going to roll with it. So if you are using the, like I cut that little poster board in the frame, you might want a little, little bit thicker cardboard than just poster board. Just a little tip, because learn from me my mistakes. <laughs> Okay, let's put the lid on that, and then we're going to start making our drop cloth body. We're making a little bird today. I told you guys I'm the bird lady here lately, out of drop cloth. All right, so I have painter's drop cloth, and I just have some scrap pieces here. And you guys have seen me. If you saw me do the uh, bunny and the snowman, you have seen me do this about an inch and a half wide strips and I'm cutting at the top and then you just pull them. Sometimes you got to cut them a little further because they want to kind of go crazy on you and not do a nice clean tear. But that one did good and then you do the same thing. You just cut as many strips as you need. So we're going to use this one here. Yeah, my comments are not rolling. Rats. So I have to look up here to see what you guys are saying. Um, I'm going to cut this end off because it's kind of, it's not squared off. And then some of these strings you can pull out or you can leave them and let them hang out, make it look a little more rustic. Well, I can't hear Hanji, but I can hear everyone else. What? <laughs> I'm not sure what. <laughs> oh no, if you can't hear me, sometimes it helps to get out and then get back in which you can't hear me to say that if you can read my lips <laughs> or someone can type it. <laughs> okay, I'm putting a little bit of glue at the end of my drop cloth and squeezing the end together, just like that. This is going to be so sweet. Oh, thanks, Beth. I, I was watching your guys' earlier. There are so many neat things today. Maybe glue that to the cardboard backing. Yes, Sharon, I might just put some hot glue. That's a good idea. We'll try it. And then it'll hold it more snug. Just tack it in there, at least, anyways. Okay, so now I have a piece of quilt batting, and I'm going to use the biggest part of it here. And I'm just going to use a little hot glue in the center and put my piece of drop cloth that I glued together, the end, right there in the middle. Let that set up for just a second. You guys have seen me do this, unless you're new, but I'm sure you've seen it somewhere else because this is not a new concept. Not something I came up with, but 
I love to do this and see what kind of shapes I can create out of it. Okay, so you're going to twist your drop cloth, twist it, and you can twist it as tight or as loose as you want. I tend to twist it a little bit tighter. And then you're going to start make, forming a circle around that center. So I'm going to put some glue down. And I twisted it, and now I'm just going to put it in a circle shape around. I'll get a little bit going here, and then I'll hold it up so you can see it, in case you're new and haven't seen this. Twisting. And I know some people don't put it on the like felt or quilt batting. They just glue it to itself as you go around. You can definitely do that. I just like having this nice flat surface to glue things down. It just works better for me. So there you go. You could see how I twisted it around in a circle. And I'm just going to keep going around and around. Wait till you guys see how this bird turns out. Super cute. So I was thinking, okay, so I'm doing about one a month. I might skip a couple months in the summer. Something I could make this summer a shape out of drop cloth. <laughs> and my husband wants me to, uh, actually he wants me to try dyeing some of the drop cloth, like red, white, and blue. And do like Americana something this summer. So I will try it. Okay, and you just keep going and going until you get the size that you want. So now I made a bigger one for the body, of course, and then a smaller one for the head. So I just have two of the drop cloth rosettes. And just keep going around and around till you get the size that you need. I can hear you. Oh, good, Patricia. Thank you. <laughs> now this does take quite a bit of glue because you're gluing all the way around as you work around it. Now you can do this project. That's what I love about these. And I have found I've had lots of friends that have made these crafts. They'll use scrap fabric that they have. They'll use scrap sheets, old sheets you don't use, old clothes, and tear them into strips so you can have pretty colors and pretty patterns. You don't have to do the drop cloth. So that's kind of nice. Anybody could do this craft with what you have at home. You can use an old, find an old picture frame that you don't use anymore, some fabric that you don't use, and you can make yourself a cute little bird. By the time I'm done, I will show you here. Okay, good. We're almost to the end of this. I just wanted to demonstrate for those that haven't seen it all the way through the process here of one at least and I have two already ready for us. Okay, now I get to the end and I make sure it's twisted pretty tight and I kind of tuck it under the end. Tuck it under the rosette that's already there. Tuck that end underneath. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Aw, thanks. Welcome. Okay, so there's our, get past that ring light so you can see it, your rosette. And it's okay if it's not exactly round because it's a bird. It's not exactly round. All right, and now you just cut your felt or quilt batting like I'm using. You can use a piece of fabric. You could use a thin piece of cardboard, whatever you want to glue it down on. It just makes it easier for me anyways. Then I have this nice big area to glue down. So there's that. Okay, now let's do that. Let's glue this down so it doesn't curl all up. And I already made sure that it fit, so we should be good on that. I need a glue stick already. Let's glue. You know what? I'm just going to go around the whole outside, maybe just a little bit in the middle to hold that middle down. Keep it from curling up. I was just thinking about using other fabrics. Yes, Sharon, you don't have to use drop cloth. 
Good idea. Whoever said that? Putting that down on that cardboard. I could have just glued it right down to the cardboard, but I was, I don't know, I was thinking in case I used the frame for something else later on, <laughs> is what my thinking behind it was originally. Let's make sure that fits. Yes, that fits. Look how pretty that brown with that cream and then that little design on there. Okay, let's put our little bird together. So cute. I want this little pattern at the top so you can see it. Let's turn it this way a little bit. And then I have my rosettes already ready, the exact sizes I need. So I made one pretty big for the main body of the bird. I have moss, Spanish moss all over this because we're gonna use some of that for the nest. We're gonna put a nest on this. And then I made one a little bit smaller for the head. So I can give you the exact dimensions. Let me, let me grab my ruler here. I'll give you the exact diameter of it. This one is about five inches, the body, the bigger one, and the head is about three. So five and three. All right, so that's gonna be our bird's body. And then we are gonna put a nest on here too. I'm thinking I wanna go ahead and put it in the frame. That way, let's get it in there. And then we'll put everything on it. And I have to line up, these have little holes, so I have to line up these little holes and put the screw back in there. Make sure my design is at the top the way I want it here. I think I want it to go that way just a little before I screw those screws in there and fasten it down. Let's see, a little bit more, turn it. <laughs> Let's just do this. Sometimes when you're doing these lives, you don't think straight, you're like, that was silly, why did I do that? <laughs> okay, I think that's pretty good. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm sorry. There's a little diamond pattern on here that I want it kind of straight up and down. You guys are probably thinking, what is she doing? Okay, that's pretty good. Let's put these in there. These screws in there, and then let's put this bird together. Get this show going here. <laughs> okay. Let's see. That one there. We'll go diagonal across. Put it in there. Love the colors. Thank you, Glinda. Pretty neutral. That one doesn't want to stay. Let's try this one. It's a little longer. Let's see if that one works. Yes, much better this one over there. Sprinkled proudly. Thanks, Elaine. <laughs> okay. I have from my Martinelli's apple juice little lid. That's what I was using to put my screws in, reusing that lid. <laughs> All right, now we're good. There it is. Cute. Still not straight up and down, but that's okay. It's going to be pretty either way. Make sure my hanger is straight up there. Now my body and the head, I'm gonna lay on there, just like that. And then we need our Spanish moss. So I have some Spanish moss here. Let's grab another chunk, let's see. That might be enough, actually. So just regular Spanish moss. We're gonna make a nice little nest for our bird. Now I have other options if you don't want to do a nest. Um, I've got something, a cute idea for legs if you want to put legs on your bird. Okay. Once I get some stuff glued down, I'll hold it up so you can see. Let's glue some of this nest down. I'm just going to lift it up and put a bunch of glue underneath. And then press it down on there. 
then any loose spots you see, just glue it all down. It's pretty easy to work with. Okay, and then we're going to lay the bird out before I glue it all down to make sure it's all on there and fits nice the way I want it to fit here. Okay, I need my scrap um, drop cloth, whatever I did with that. Let's see what size piece I have over here. Let's, we're going to grab this back over here because we need a wing. We need a wing and a tail. All right, so now we're going to cut a wing and I'm just going to cut. I'm not even going to measure anything. Let's cut this end off here. I'm just going to cut around and make a wing. I made one ahead of time, so if I don't like this one, I can use the one that I cut earlier. <laughs> just like that. It's really easy. And then I just want to fray it. This drop cloth frays really easy. Fray it a little bit. You can do it on both sides. Whoops. Just pull as many little strings out as you want. I think the more frayed and tattered it looks, the better. So then we have a little wing. It looks more like feather when you tatter it like that and fray the edges. So there's one wing and then we need a tail. So same thing. Let's cut off these weird shapes from the wing. I'm just going to cut a tail. I'm going to cut it, start narrow and make it wider. Not measuring it, not drawing it out. Just eyeballing. I'm going to make two little, make a little dip in the middle at the end of the tail. I'll show you. And then bring it back in, narrow. It's almost like a heart, the top of a heart at the end. So it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical on each side of it. And then you can do the same thing. You can kind of fray it. Really easy to make a little wing and tail. It's my hot spot. I'm letting my grandson use. Oh, I missed something. There are so many cute bird decorations being made. There are, I've seen a ton. Okay, now, so I have my wing and I have my tail. And then I went ahead and cut out of that really cute black and cream colored ticking that I had. I cut out a tail and a wing the same way that I just did out of the drop cloth. And we're going to put those on top of the drop cloth. So here we go. Let's use the ones that I cut out. And we're just going to hot glue them right on top. Just like that. So then that makes a really cute little wing. Spoke too soon. A wing and a tail. <laughs> cute makes it look like feathers it does when you fray it like that it does and then over the tail here and then put that one on there like that so really simple easy you can use whatever fabric that you want what if you put the head on the other side of the frame oh I see what you're saying switch it around oh I could do that now I didn't make it that way, so now it's backwards, so I'll try it. <laughs> we'll try it. You know when you do something ahead of time? Let me see, because, oh, I don't know, because when I had it all planned out where I want to lay everything, <laughs> I think I'm going to leave it that way, because my wing's going to cover up a lot of this anyways. You'll see. We'll just roll with it. Okay, let's set that aside and hot glue our tail on there. A little ticking. And then just push it down on there. You could totally use spray adhesive or some kind of adhesive to put that on there. There's that one. Let's make sure I got this little edge down really good. So it's sticking up just a little bit. 
and then do the same thing on this one. You guys throw those ideas out there. I don't, it does, I love it. Because sometimes, well, a lot of times, you guys see things that I don't see. It gets me thinking another way, which that's what this is all about. Learning from each other and thinking outside the box, thinking a different way. Okay, so there's our little wing. Look how cute that is. Really easy. Now the tail, I'm going to tuck under the end of him here. And then the wing, I cut out a little piece of poster board too. I forgot that I wanted, I was going to just lay the wing on there, but it wants to just droop over the edge of him. So a little piece of poster board will do the trick to keep it from drooping over. So we're gonna glue that on the poster board. So I'm just gonna put some hot glue right on there and then stick it right on that wing. And it gives it a little support. Just like that. Then when we lay the wing on there, it's gonna stay up. Okay, so you can't see it yet. Let's kinda of hold it up, but it is looking super cute. I hope you guys are liking it. <laughs> what kind of frame is that? Reminds me of a clock frame. It was an old vintage frame. I found at a resale shop. I thought it was super cute. Anytime I like a round or an oval frame. All right, now, so for the beak, what I used was I cut, I just took a petal off of a flower, a silk flower that I had, and I just trimmed the inside of the petal to a point. And I left the outside of the petal rounded because we're going to stick that underneath of this head. You won't even see that part, but then, then the point is going to stick out. So just a little silk flower petal. We're going to stick that right underneath his head. See my time here. Okay, like that. Cute. I think I can glue him down because the rest of the stuff that we add, we got some other fun stuff to put on here. Let's go ahead and glue him down. I think this is a good spot. Let's glue the beak onto the head first. So I get it right where I want it. Let's make sure. Pull that beak out there just a little bit. I want it to stick out a little more. Really easy way to make a beak. Just use your little silk flowers. Okay. And then we're going to put that right there so let's glue that down you just put a bunch of hot glue on the back and then on the beak and then place it right where you want it and then we'll work our way across the bird and glue it down hi Cynthia set our wing aside Let's see, I want the tail right there. So let's flip it over and glue that part of the tail down. That's touching the body of the bird. Let that set and then we'll glue all the rest. I passed up a round frame. Oh, rats, I know I love a round frame or an oval frame, especially when you're doing a gallery wall Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of lift up the edge of this Spanish moss so the body of the bird goes down in the nest just a little bit. Okay, and then we got this part of our tails loose. We're just going to tack it lightly right on the edge of the frame. So if you ever want to use the frame for something else, you just take this whole inside piece out, put new cardboard in it, and you can use it. That little tack won't hurt anything. Okay, let's hold it up so you can see what it's looking like so far. Oops, super cute. Let's put the wing on it because that adds a lot. Makes it look more like a bird. Now these, I know these drop cloth crafts are not for everyone, but 
I think they're super cute and I love the versatility of them that anybody can make them using what you have. Okay. Too cute. Okay, let's, can I get some of the birds behind you, please? I am going to do that again. It's just been really crazy busy and cutting. It just, I have not had time, but I will get to it. I will eventually here. <laughs> okay, I have this really cute branch. I use these, I'm about out of them, but I have a couple left. Resale shop, I found this at a resale shop. I always look at their florals. It's a good tip because florals can be expensive. So always look and see if they have any, get them when you're at a resale shop because they're usually way cheaper. I need another glue stick already. Let's pull out one of these big ones. <laughs> now I'm just going to glue this branch right underneath of the nest. So it's kind of like it's sitting on a tree branch. Now you don't have to do this step, of course, because not everybody's going to have, let's push that in there a little more, this branch. But any kind of little flower stem that looks kind of woodsy, you could put underneath of there. Glue that on there. Oh, so cute. Thank you. A little, yes, I have a little button for the eye. A little bead would work, a little button. Good. You guys are keeping me on my toes, keeping me so I don't forget because I do that a lot. <laughs> I get ahead of myself. <laughs> interested in the birds too. When I make cut some more, they will go in my store. Just got to find the time to do it. Okay, let's hold that side down and get out my little button that I have for his eye and put it right there. And then I'll hold up so you can see what it looks like so far. Let's check. Okay, got about 10 minutes. It's Miss Sherry from Kirby Ladies Crafting is on after me. Okay, that is not wanting to stay. So I'm holding it. Let's put the eye on there. Just gonna put a little dab of glue and the button. You could use a bead, a button, a pearl, whatever you have. There we go. We're gonna add more. We're not done yet. Looking super cute. <laughs> Okay, now I have, these are the flowers that I took the petal off of for his beak. And they're just um, from Dollar Tree, just Dollar Tree flowers. We're going to stick those down in there. Hydrangeas, my favorite. These are a pretty color, kind of a coral color. Hydrangea. And then this is going to cover up the end. The flower covers up the end of that branch so you don't see the end. Let's hot glue those down in there. Just gonna put a dab of glue. I just cannot believe all the things you can create with drop cloth, guys. <laughs> cute stuff. Just really cute. Okay, so there's with the flowers. That adds a little pop of color and ties in his beak. Looking cute. Look how pretty this is. Oh, I love it. Now, I was going to show you, if you don't use the nest, you can get these, like, they almost look like a whisk, like a broom thing at Dollar Tree. And it usually has a little dried flower, wood flower on it. I used the flower for something, but this was left over. But look at that. You cut off a couple, and they would make the perfect little feet, bird feet. And those are at Dollar Tree. So that would work great if you didn't put it in a nest. So that's just another little idea to throw out there if you want feed on it. Okay, I have a few little eggs here. We're gonna put those eggs in there. And they have a little hole in the bottom, like they had a wooden little uh, skewer or dowel rod in it. I don't know, they didn't, they were in a package. We're gonna put a little, I have a little barbecue skewer. I wanna put a little piece in there to stick down in my nest. You use what they sell little eggs like this at Dollar Tree. Most of the time they're colored, but you can paint over them if they're not the color you want. Let's put a little glue in there. That way when I glue them down in there, 
it's a little easier because I'll poke them down in the nest. And then one more. Whoops, I'm throwing it. I made the rolled rag rosettes this. Aw, thanks, Donna. I think that was Donna. Yeah, I can't see very good <laughs> from this far away. Okay, so now I can poke those little barbecue skewers down in the nest and we'll glue them down. We'll put a few little eggs in there. All right. Stick some glue on it, that skewer, and then stick it back down in there. And that's going to help hold it in there. Might put a little glue underneath here. Sometimes I get a little glue happy. <laughs> I don't want it going anywhere. There we go. Look. Really cute. I love this little bird. You guys know how I like my birds anyways. Okay, what time? So you have time for one more touch. Oh, I have five minutes. I have this. This is just a little Dollar Tree chalkboard. And I printed on paper, Hello Spring. I wanted real quick to try to put that. I was going to write it in chalk. You could handwrite it. But my handwriting is not always the best, especially with chalk for some reason. I struggle. So I printed this out. I'm tearing it around the edges so it's not nice and straight. And then I think I might just Mod Podge that right on there. I'm going to try it and see if it works. Okay, Mod Podge, really quick so you guys can see this. And then I have a little stand that I thought it might be cute setting on. So I'm putting a thin coat of Mod Podge on that little sign. And then putting a little bit right over top just to seal it down. And then I probably don't have time now, but I'm going to take some of that antique wax and brush it over the top just so it looks old and dirty and not bright white. So I'll just take that Waverly antique wax and brush some right over the top. But I'll do that and then I'll take a picture so you guys can see. It says Hello Spring on there. And just stick that little sign in there. And then I thought it would be cute if you have just an, this is an antique stand. I have a bunch of different ones. I wasn't sure which one would work. But you stick it on a little stand. And how cute will that be setting out for the spring? Oh, I made it. Good. Three minutes. What do you guys think? I think it's just as cute as the snowman and the bunny, <laughs> if I do say so myself. I hope you guys will try this. You'll have to send me pictures if you try it. I hope it inspires you. I appreciate you joining me today. Like I said, Sherry from Curvy Ladies Crafting is on right after me. The link for the March into Spring um, group is in my video description. So you can click on that and go check out the rest of the really neat crafts from today. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you all next time. Bye. Get that out of the way. <laughs>